This is an early session with Guardian Dublin. Probably his the beginning of his second month of training, but the first uh, couple of weeks were spent just getting him into reasonable physical condition with some basic groundwork, but also teaching him how to flexion his lower jaw and how to move off from a vibrato pressure on his sides. And what we're working on is following our head, basically following where our forehead is pointed. And of course, since I've taught him the jaw flexions, which work vertically as well as laterally, I can sort of control the disposition of his head, which also places a certain amount of weight in a certain spot which will in, in, incline him to, or, or encourage him to, say, fall to the inside. Because initially I want him getting used to the notion of plea. And the plea, when I, when I use the term plea, P-L-I, I think it's an old Italian word, it refers to the bend the, and the degree of it, the amount of curve that I'm kind of asking for between his withers and his eye. So if I'm going around the left, I can see just a little bit of his inside eye. And uh, if I'm going to the right, I can see a little bit of his, uh, his inside eye. That is his right eye if I'm going to the right. And the reason for this is that typically we are traveling on a, on a circle, either a very large circle or a very right circle. And uh, or, or rather, we're typically going to be traveling on a vector of a circle. Uh, we're going to be moving off slightly bending to the right or we're going to be moving off slightly bending to the left. And even if we're going straight, probably we have a notion of which foot we would take off uh, to the canter using, um, right or, or left. And so that, that plea helps us begin to get the horse traveling straight, uh, straight up and down, so that when he turns, his body, is the axis is still remaining vertically. He's not leaning into his turns like, uh, like on a motorcycle. And if I can keep him from leaning into his turn in one direction, then I can also, almost by definition, once I've taught in both directions, I can get him to go straight because I've got that left and right control and, and kind of a and control over the vertical axis of his body overall. So he's already learned the jaw flexion. He will not resist my hand per se. Uh, to the extent he does resist, we are lifting the bed to the corners of his mouth where the tissue is very soft. There's no bone such as the jaw, right, to get in the way. And so what happens is that instead of it turning into a pulling contest with him having the ability to use several times more strength and uh, the power of his lower jaw, he can really only lift his head when I, when I lift the reins. And unless he just wants to turn him and in, invert himself into a uh, circle, his hind legs must come underneath and uh, that is going to break him or stop him if he's going forward. Now, if I do that and simultaneously ask him to mobilize with my heels, that equates to a reverse. But I'm beginning to put my heels on him every time before I apply the reins so that he transfers the signal to my heels 
And so in a very short amount of time, in fact, within this lesson, he will begin stopping on his own, stopping in self-carriage so that you don't see any any uh, sort of dynamic occurring between his mouth and my hands and therefore um, you won't see unnecessary movement in his head when he brings himself into a self-carried stop. Now this is a sort of sensitive time during training because uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you can end up putting your horse behind the bed. And I don't want the horse behind the bed. I don't want him behind or in front of the bed or behind or in front of my legs. I want him precisely in between my hand and my heels. I don't want him pushing on the bed, but I don't want him afraid to feel the bed so that he can follow it. I want him to understand the various effects that my heel can create. One is a vibrato sensation like that. It's um, pulsating. It's not static. A static pressure uh, means to demobilize or uh, bring increase collection at the end of the day, bring your hind end uh, beneath you. And so right here he's sticking, so I'm going to give him a little bit of heel and lift him a bit. You can see there's not, there's not, it, there's barely any tension between my hand and his mouth. All the, the, you know, lifting his head and so forth. He's doing that on his own and that's perfectly fine because he's exercising exactly the muscles I want him to exercise to develop his pole area and begin, um, and begin developing his muscles in such a way that simply hanging his head in that position there basically uh, becomes most comfortable. And uh, when he is in collection, when he is moving in a, in a correct uh, manner, a manner which uh, optimizes movement in any direction next uh, as, a, as a possibility, then moving with your head on a more or less vertical axis is, is going to be the most comfortable way if you're a quadruped built like a horse. Now in order to keep him from falling behind my leg, right, he could get too used to stopping and um, be reluctant to come off my heel or he could get confused between what I mean when I vibrate my leg versus what I mean when I squeeze with a steady pressure on my leg. In order to ensure those concepts are remaining separate, I do a lot of stopping and then starting going full, full steam ahead into the trot with absolutely no room for confusion around my hand. I just completely open my hand and let him take off with as much thrust from a halt as he wishes and then I catch him back up with my hands after a few strides and I want him to begin separating I want him to allow me to take him back in with my hands that is go from a completely open hand to a what I would call a following hand um, where I'm just following the action of his mouth but if I are uh, if I were to block uh, or increase the tension on the reins slightly, he would begin paying attention to that and think about uh, slowing down or increasing collection or getting ready for the next thing. And I push him off into a, just a very forward trot. Um, I'll only ever post on this horse for just a couple of uh, a couple of rides, probably. Um, thereafter, he's strong enough to be working uh, using a carried trot, and um, posting would just be unnecessary. So that's uh, that's Dublin, and at the end of month one.